Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video we're looking at the Midnight Aegis Star, which is this lovely thing right here, which packs a lot of destruction and has a built-in self-repair system. So this thing can basically camp an area and just, well, wipe out anything that comes after it. But there is a big warning with this, if you activate the self-repair system, stand by for low frame rates. But I'll get onto that in just a bit. So if I take control of my character properly, let's go and take a look around the outside of this ship. I'm only going to look at one of these wings because they're identical on each side. Each of the three wings all feature missile turrets and gatling turrets following a pattern of missile turret, gatling, gatling, missile turret and it goes all the way along to the end. They also have two hidden missile launches right at the very start there. So if you were to fly vertically, you can shoot the enemies. However, if you were to fly horizontally, you do have some missile launchers sitting there on the very ends to shoot your enemies. Now, hopefully I said that correctly because I'm getting very confused. If I was to face down and move along, you'll notice that there are welders every step of the way. This is to ensure the ship is fully repaired in combat. So unless it gets blown up outright, it can just repair itself to continue fighting. Coming along to the outer edge, we have a button panel, which is for the connector right there, which is sitting on a piston, so you can extend it out and connect it up to a supply ship to keep this thing supplied with materials so it can keep repairing itself. Coming along to the bottom of the ship, we have the exact same story of Gatling turrets and missile turrets, two missile launchers and some welders going along. But let's take a look at the side of it. So we've got this lovely detailed thing here, which can move, but I'll show that in just a second. Moving along, we have some hydrogen thrusters. We've got some iron thrusters, which are turned off, but I'll once again come back to that in a minute. Now, the difference between these two hangar doors are very important. This one opens up to allow the ship fly in, where there's a connector inside for you to connect up to. These ones here are for you to protect the hydrogen thrusters. So if you were in combat, you could turn off the hydrogen thrusters, close this up to ensure they don't take damage. Coming along past through here, we have another hangar door and some also some thruster hangar doors. And if I was to whoop, do a somersault, I'll be able to find the door to go inside or I could just fall to my death. On each of the wings you will find a door which you can open up to let you go inside. There's not too much of an interior for you to walk around, it's mainly for you to get to the cockpit. But as you notice, if I was to just scoot around here, there's a lot of welders, there's a lot of blocks, timer blocks, containers, conveyors, you name it, it's in here. Coming along to the opposite side, we've got all the hydrogen thrusters, some more welders, there is the connector for you to connect up to once the hangar doors are open. But yes, coming back around here, we've got some gyroscopes. We have the hydrogen tanks. We've got the gravity generators. And that is basically it. There is a jump drive if you wish to activate the warp drives, which is right there. So it is warp capable. Let's go into the cockpit and see what options we have. There are two tabs for this. So let's start with number one. Number one is the missiles and I'm sitting in the wrong seat. So turning my camera, there are the missiles for you to shoot out the front there. Kind of hard to see because the camera keeps adjusting whenever I turn. Number two is for the camera so you can fly in first person. Number three is for the welders. Now, before I activate this, here is the current frame rate. Okay, pretty smooth. Now I'm going to press number three. Here is the frame rate once again. It's a little bit more laggy. So turning that off for the moment, we then come along to the next options, which are the Gatling turrets and the missile turrets, which can turn off should you wish. Number six is the warp drive. So if you want to activate the warp drive, you can. Number seven is a very fancy button. Pressing this will activate the ion thrusters and open it up. This is so you can have more control over the ship when flying in space. Because as it stands right now, with them turned off, it's very hard to manoeuvre this thing. Number 8 will change the weapon side to wherever you're sitting, because I'm sitting in that seat. So now all the missiles will then change to that one. Pressing number 8 again will do nothing because I haven't moved seat. Pressing number 9 is a very important button, and you should always press this before any other. Pressing number 9 will tell the ship that you're sitting in this specific seat, because each of the three wings all have a seat. 
and when you sit in one of them, you'll need to press number 9 to make sure the ship knows which directions you want to go. But what about tab number 2? So we have a bunch of little buttons over here which are for the hangar doors. So if I was to press number 1, it will open up the hangar doors which are on the side that I'm driving. It will not affect the other two sides. 3 and 4 are for the hydrogen thrusters, so if I was to press number 4 first because they're already open, they'll start to close. Pressing number 3 will then open them up. Moving across, of course we got the hydrogen and the ion thrusters which we can turn on and off as we please. And then number 7 and number 8 are basically the master controls, which if I press number 8, it will then close up, or in this case, it will open up the other ones and close these ones because they control all the hangar doors. Number 9 is an important button, but you don't generally need to press it. It simply resets the ship in case something goes wrong. You press it, you wait a little bit, and then you can go back to your tab number 1 and take control of the seat again. So pressing number 9, you'll then take control. Pressing 8, we'll switch your guns to my side. And that is basically it for this ship. Flying around is exceptionally slow. Very, very slow, but it was not designed to maneuver fast. It stops well. It turns relatively well. And that is basically it. One thing I did see on the Steam Workshop page was if I was to activate the repair tool and have two of these fight each other, it would be an infinite fight. So beans I'm on creative mode, I don't see why I can't do that. So to finish this off, what I have done is I'm going to close up my wings and I've spawned in a second one. I painted one of the wings on that ship red and now I'm going to basically give it to the pirates and let these two fight it out. So let's just select all them, transfer it to the space pirates. Let's see how well this goes. And here they go. So technically, if the frame rate can hold out, they should be locked in an infinite battle. But yes, as you can see, it's taking no damage because the repair system is working flawlessly. Doesn't matter how many missiles I throw at it, it will just keep repairing itself up. And this is almost like a cartoon levels of lag. Look at that. So that was a small demonstration of it repairing itself. A few of the Gatling turrets are still damaged, but that is because I turned off the welding system a little bit too soon. But yes, if you have two of these fight each other, they can fight forever and a day, provided you are on creative mode. I'll leave a link to it in the description below so you can download it and try it out yourself. Once again, the repair system is very laggy to use, especially when there are two of them in the same map. And considering this is an empty world with nothing in it, yes, that was quite a performance hit. Thank you all for watching. I'll be back with another video sometime soon. Bye bye.